All right, guys, it is time to do Diana's bad ending. And it starts right from the very beginning. So here we go as we dive into whatever this is going to be. I'm, I'm, I'm nervous, even though I kind of know what's going to happen. That's in, Maybe that's why I'm nervous. But anyway, let's just see how it plays out and we'll deal with it when we get to the end of it. First off, screaming and burning the room. We watch in silence this time. I kept my distance, giving her space to mourn and grieve. She had lost three people very close to her, and she came back to her castle in flames. She needed space and time. I waited until she finished, curling into herself and whimpered hoarsely. Diana. Let's... let's just go. Okay. So she's grieving. And then here... We interrupt again. <clears throat> We've seen this already. Sarah's not impressed with us already. And this time... Do we still tell her? Yeah, we still tell her about the nightmare. I guess it doesn't... Th that one doesn't really matter. Could've picked the other one, but... Maybe she should have a preview of what's gonna probably happen. <laughs> okay, and this time, I hug her closer instead of kiss her. I hugged her to me, trying to give her energy through my body. However, as I tried, Sarah pulled Diana away from me and lifted her head to kiss her. As their lips locked, Diana's hands unconsciously moved and cupped Sarah's cheeks. Oh, that could have been a thing I could have done. Interesting. But, I'm a... Uh, gonna be the worst and pull her away. I didn't trust Sarah one bit, and I didn't want him kissing Diana, even if he was doing it to give her energy. I grabbed Diana and pulled her back to me, wrapping my arms around her and glaring at Sarah hard. What? <laughs> what? I can give her energy just fine. I could feel the poisonous tone in my voice slither into each word I said to Sarah. However... As I finished speaking, and as the look in Sarah's eyes switched from surprise to anger, Diana began to stir in my arms. Diana? Diana slowly opened her eyes and looked up to me, dazed, but still growing a small smile on her face. Oh boy, we're gonna be in trouble with that boy. And this time, we don't say anything. So we're like just keeping our distance from Diana quite a bit while also giving the mixed signal of stay away from my girls. After a moment Diana turned to the brute demon and nodded. Okay, so we just skipped that little interaction between the two of us. She had nothing to say there. And now we say what you don't say to Yandere's. Well, she loves me. I could feel Sarah's gaze on me become stone cold. I didn't care. I loved Diana, and I didn't want him to have her. Not after the things I had seen in my dreams. I continued to watch Diana. She's already made her choice. You should respect that and leave her alone. I was given silence as Sarah's reply. However, I could feel the air change from warm and comfortable to cold and almost frightening. I didn't care. I would win this. Oh, yeah. Interesting. I could feel Sarah's gaze on my back. Would he step in and fight me doing as she asked? I looked back to see him holding back a glare. His eyes flashed a soft white, revealing the crosses in his black irises as he simmered in his spot. Ah! Right? <laughs> I let her back to, to the room. We'll be fine. So I didn't have the option to say... Um, I can't remember what the other... Like, we, we had, like, two... After that choice, there was another choice that we could have made. I can't remember what the other thing was. Like, she belongs to me or something like that. I guess it's basically the same dealio. Okay. So this time, instead of saying, I love you, I say, I don't care about them. It was true. I didn't care what they said about me. 
I was here for Diana, not for them. Diana stared at me for the longest time before smiling a bit and nodding. Right. We went to bed that night, knowing that the days ahead would resume to be full of work, struggle, and the need to be strong for each other. Interesting. So I didn't have the option to say, maybe we should just go to bed. I woke that morning, however, alone. I slowly sat up, feeling pillows beneath my head, and Diana nowhere to be found. N Diana? I looked around, confused and lost. Where did she go? She wouldn't have left the room without waking me up. Is there? I called out her real name, hoping she would appear at the sound of her true name. Still, nothing happened, and I was still alone. The stone in my gut suddenly pulsed, sending a wave of worry through my body. Something was wrong! I quickly jumped out of bed, got dressed, and rushed to the war room in a panic. Maybe she was there, doing a meeting without me. Maybe I had overslept. Diana? Whoa! This is awkward. Inside, however, were the demon rebel leaders and Saro, all with equally worried faces. She's not with you? Saro put her in the dungeon! Oh my goodness. <gasps> wow, he moved fast. My eyes darted around the room, seeing no succubus in sight. I walked in, shaking my head at Rabbit's question, causing the people in the room to grow even more concerned faces. And this is a problem. No shit! Where is she? My eyes instantly went to Saro, seeing him panic. His eyes darted back and forth on the table, his expression painted in utter fear. Suddenly, he began to storm out of the room. I must find her! Before anyone could stop him, he ran out of the room. <laughs> well, my notes say to remain in the war room, so I guess I'm gonna remain in the war room. I became more and more concerned, but I knew that she would be found. Saro knew this castle better than I did. He'd find her quicker than me. In the war room, nothing could be done. The leaders tried to come up with plans for the day, but wound up with nothing because of Diana being on their minds. The hour became late in the morning when Saro returned, exhausted but unfruitful. I can't find her anywhere. I can't even sense her presence in the castle. Do you think someone kidnapped her? I quickly shook my head. We were in the same room when she vanished. If someone came, I would have seen them. Suddenly, the worry in my gut intensified, reminding me of the dream I wanted to forget. I looked back at Saro, seeing him stare at me intensely. To a random person, it would have looked like he was listening. To me, I could tell that he was watching me as if he were waiting for me to say something to set him off. Before I could open my mouth, however, Shadow let out a tired sigh. <sighs> we are wasting precious time. We need to come up with a strategy for our next attack now. We should at least send out some scouts to try and find her. If she was taken somehow, then she shouldn't have gone far. Everyone in the room nodded in agreement, except for me. I knew something was up. Sarah's face gave it all away. However, this room was full of demons, and I was a mere human. I knew calling him out wouldn't do anything. As the leaders exchanged words, Sarah excused himself, wanting to join in the search for Diana. And this time I follow him. I wasn't going to let him get away from my sight. If he was hiding where Diana was, then I would free her. I was suspicious of Saro. Something about how he was going about this caused red flags to wave throughout my mind. Was he hiding her, like in my dream? As I expected, Saro stopped walking and opened a small passage hidden behind a large painting. Where was he going? I followed, determined to find Diana. I pushed the painting aside and wiggled into the passageway, becoming engulfed in darkness as the painting, on its own, closed behind me. It took every ounce of my self-control to keep quiet and not gasp in surprise. I placed my hands on the walls and followed it forward, trying to remain quiet. As I reached the end, I found Saro kneeling in the middle of a pitch-black room. I didn't understand how he was illuminated in the dark, but I watched as he lowered his head and... prayed. Please forgive me for what I must do. Look away for this one moment, for I work in the name and peace of the five worlds. I shall bear my sins to death and into purgatory for all of eternity. 
felt like running, rushing back out of the passage. Something was dark about this entire situation. Maybe it's because we're in the dark? Haha. -ha. And the prior Sarah muttered barely made sense. Why was he doing this? There we go. I didn't get a chance to run as Saro suddenly looked back at me, locking eyes with me and freezing me in place. His eyes were glowing a pure golden color as large black crosses embedded themselves as his irises. My body was unable to move. I couldn't even breathe. I struggled against the hold on me but found no avail. Saro pointed his hand to me and willed my body forward into the dark space. With a dark smile, Sarah licked his lips and stood up, standing tall before me. As he stared down at me, I could feel the judgment and hatred in his eyes pierce into my soul, like I was a lowly being, not worthy of the breath I was being denied. Come here, human child. I became both fearful and confused. What was happening? I could barely concentrate as the lack of air in my lungs caused the room around me to spin. My body quaked against Sarah's hold, but he continued to walk me forward towards him. As I came within arm's reach, Sarah gently wrapped his hand around my throat and lifted me up. I could barely feel his grasp, nor could I flail about, still caught in his spell. I could only let him move me further into the darkness, pressing me completely against a wall. Sarah lifted one of my arms to the side of me, stretching it out and pressing my hand back against the wall. On its own, it remained, as Sarah did the same to my other arm. I was completely open, as if I was laid against a cross. However, there was nothing holy about this. My vision began to darken as I suffocated, my body desperately clawing for air. As Sarah allowed air to fill my lungs, I gagged and coughed violently. Uh, uh, Sarah, what are you doing to me? My voice was breathless, pain from being denied air. However, my body remained still in place, glued to the wall behind me. <laughs> Sarah only smirked at me, holding his arms out. With a hideous laugh, Sarah observed me from my place in the invisible cross he had placed me on. Rejoice, human. You are about to become part of something much grander than you could have ever imagined. What are you talking about? <laughs> Some good laughs here. Sarah laughed, arching back to cackle at the ceiling. As he looked back to me, I could see the jealous monster behind his frightening eyes. You have no place here, human. You should be grateful that I am granting you a purpose. A gift from heaven above. <laughs> there! I called out, desperate to stop Sarah at all costs. However, as it didn't work before, Diana didn't appear. Sarah smirked even wider and stepped up to me, looking with the most maddened eyes I had ever seen. You are unworthy of speaking her name. I snarled, pulling at my limbs to try and move. Alas, I could do nothing. Sarah stepped back and summoned his spear, dancing a hand over it and examining it in his grasp. Whatever delusions you had of being with her will fade away as you pass on. So that's it. You're gonna kill me. I'll haunt you for the rest of your life. I was frightful, but my anger masked my fear. I didn't want to die, but I wasn't going to cry in front of the psychopath wanting to take my life. As Sarah looked up at me again, he chuckled darkly. You won't be able to haunt me from within Heaven's gates. What? That's right. I plan to baptize you, cleansing you of all of your sins before I trade your life for a promise from Heaven's most powerful angels. You will be bathed in light and will forever live in the city of Heaven. Isn't that such a wonderful gift? Uh-huh. I tried to find some sort of weakness in Saro. As I stared into his eyes, I figured out what the hell he was. You're... an angel? Saro grimaced at the word, shaking his head. Half. I am what angels call a tainted Nephilim. One who is born both by the light of heaven and of the taint of magic. I was dropped into this world after being born, and I was cursed to never return. I stared, unbelieving what I was hearing. However, Sarah smiled an almost innocent smile as his gaze softened. However, I was blessed enough to be found by Isaiah's father and mother. They took me in, and when I started to walk, they introduced me to their daughter, my lady Isaiah. I have been by her side ever since. 
But when I was old enough to know of love, her family realized what I was. Sarah ran his fingers along his chest, over the large scar that decorated his skin. I was tortured by the king's men, and was chained in the lowest cell of the dungeon. I was there for God knows how long until... Isaiah found me, and demanded I be released to her. She saved me from a fate worse than death. Sarah looked at his hand, shaking as a crazed smile painted itself across Sarah's cheeks. She is my goddess, my savior, my purity. She took pity on a being like me, and even showed me how to truly love. I was blessed to feel her lips on mine, her hands across my skin, the warmth of her innocence. Damn. My stomach began to churn, disgusted by Sarah's filthy expression. As he looked up at me, he suddenly glared hard. Then you came and demanded that she be yours. You dared to claim her when she is not yours to take. Fear suddenly took control of my core. It was true. I had tried to take her as my own, pushing Sarah violently away. Was this my just desserts? <laughs> yep. No, it couldn't have been. I loved her and wanted to protect her. Sarah spit on the ground, laughing quietly. Well, as her honored protector and lover, I will permanently remove that little delusion of yours. You will no longer have the chance to take her away or be with her ever again. Sarah was insane. He bared his teeth in a wild smile as he set his spear beside him. You will be in heaven, and Isaiah will rule over the demon world as its true queen until she dies. When that time comes, we will go together to purgatory and live within its eternal realm in peace. You're a monster. A monster I may be, but I will happily bear that sin if I can protect her from you. Suddenly, Sarrow twirled his spear around and rammed it into my stomach, causing me to choke out a cry of pain. My body shook from the intense pain as blood dribbled from the wound down Sarrow's spear. I cleanse you of your sins. May heaven embrace your spirit and welcome you into its white city. Uh, uh, uh. The soft feeling of feathers. Wizard, is that you? Danced over my skin and I could feel my mind becoming quickly blank. All of the memories I had suddenly began to burn all of the memories I had suddenly began to burn away. Definitely the wizard. My friends, my family, the demon world. Everything was being dissolved into nothing. My vision became dark as the pain ripped through my body. The spare remained within my body, draining me of life. Before I finally embraced death, I could hear Sarah speak one last phrase. It is finished. My sweet, Whoa. beautiful Isaiah. While I would hold you in my arms forever, your people need you. <laughs> that crown. Oh, she's got the collar that he had on his neck. Whoa. That is so crazy. But I wish to stay with you longer. What did you do to her? We cannot stay long. But if you insist... I do. As you wish, my queen. Repent for your sins. Yep, I sinned. I definitely sinned. <laughs> wow. Man. He held off for so long and then Angel just like made him completely lose it. And, uh, and then he finally just decided to brainwash her, which he could have done all this time. My goodness. Sarah is so OP, though. Whee-hee! And I don't know why, but that was, like, my favorite out of the endings for Diana. <laughs> I don't know why! Not Maybe not my favorite. I mean, I don't know, it just... I, yeah, I don't mean, like, favorite in the terms of, like, that was a really good ending. I'm glad it ended that way. Just, it made more sense to me than the other two. For some reason. I don't know. It, it felt more believable. Like, that's how it would actually play out, but... Poor Diana. Uh, poor me. I guess I got baptized again. <laughs> that's how I end this, is I get baptized yet again. By the wizard of all people. Oh, my goodness. Alright, well. 
that was certainly an ending. I uh, thank you guys for joining me for all of that. I hope you enjoyed it. Question mark. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's, that's all the roots for Seduce Me too. We do have some extra stuff to do, but I'm not going to do that quite yet. I'm just going to distance myself from all of that for a little bit, and then go back to Date Warp and do the true ending for that. So hopefully I'll see you guys over there for that. I'm very excited to see how that all wraps up in the end. So I guess I'll see you over there, guys. Thanks again for watching, and until next time... I will see you later.